go. If you ever go into archaeology, don't forget about density. Like you were trying to liberate a golden idol. Uh, within I. Mon sm oh, smart board says I want to crash. No, it's going to get there. Okay. Uh, so, density. What does density equal? What does density mean? Something with mass and volume. Somebody tell me what we're going to do with mass and volume. Divide. Which one is going to be on top? If you have a lot of density, do you have a lot of mass? Or do you have a lot of volume? A lot of mass. So it's going to be mass on top. So mass is proportional to volume. If you have a big, or proportional to density, excuse me. If you have a big volume, that would make for a small density. Okay, so density equals mass or volume. What is a unit of mass that we use in metric stuff? Not everybody at once here, Pete Block. Uh, you see what? Say again? Grams. So we're going to do the numerator is going to be in grams. What's the denominator going to be in? Milliliters. Here is an interesting fact. If I have a thousand grams, how much is that? One kilogram. So I multiply that by a thousand and I get the kilogram. If I multiply a milliliter by a thousand, if I have a thousand milliliters, how much do I have? A liter. So being a gram per milliliter is the same thing as being a kilogram per liter. I know some of you have the metric system, but those things are basically the same. There is one material density that we have already talked about in this class. One material whose density you may know. Julia, yeah. water. What is water's density? Water. Yeah, that's how they define the gram. They said, we're going to take one centimeter cubed, one centimeter by one centimeter, and that's how we define it as one milliliter. And then if we fill that with water, that's going to be one gram. And so therefore, sort of by definition of the gram, the basis of the gram, water has a density of one gram per milliliter. Pure water at 25 degrees Celsius general atmospheric conditions. If something floats, what can you say about its density if it floats in water? It's less than one. Floating is, has a density less than one. If it sinks, what can you say about it? Density is greater than one. But that we assume is for water only. That's everything from seas, stuff floating in water, except for the demo we just did. In the demo we just did, we had, come on, smart board, we had water, we had wax, candles, and we had alcohol. Turn to look at the person next to you and decide the order that you would put those things in in terms of density. Which is the most dense, which is the least dense. Discuss for 30 seconds or so. Go. Look at the person next to you and decide what is the most dense, what is the least dense. What did the wax do in water? Float. So is it more or less dense than water? It is less dense than water because it floated. What did the wax do in alcohol? It sank. Is it more or less dense than the alcohol? More. So wax is 
more dense than alcohol, but less dense than water. And so on our density o meter, it goes in this order. That water is the most dense and alcohol is the least dense. Okay, and wax is in between them because it floats in the water but sinks in the alcohol. Give me a number that you think wax's density might be. Make up a number. 0.5 would be a reasonable density. What would alcohol's density be then? 0.2. These are reasonable guesses, just in terms of the scale of the number. Densities are not going to be like 148. Okay? They're going to be numbers, these being 0, they're going to be between 0 and 1. They're probably a little bit heavier than this. It's probably like 0.8 and 0.7 or something, but these are reasonable numbers. Let's uh, do a small density problem. Reach for your calculator if you don't have one out already. If I have something that has a mass of 45 grams and a volume of 7.4 milliliters, what is its density going to be? Go to our calculator. I've got some extra calculators back here. If you're desperate to join some calculation in your time. Forty-five grams divided by seven point four milliliters is going to equal what? Six point zero eight. I think I heard someone say six point zero eight grams per milliliter. How many sig figs do I have in my factors? So how many should I have my answer? So what should my answer be? Six point one grams per milliliter is probably all I can be confident of. That problem is easy. Julie is yawning, so we need to take it up a notch and have you guys do a little bit more by figuring out the volume. Okay. So here is a ream of paper. You guys are used to paper being what dimensions? Eight and a half by eleven, which I think how we normally discuss a sheet of paper. But that's in ugly inches, so we're going to use metric. On this, it happens to say it's two hundred and sixteen centimeters by two hundred and sixteen. Millimeters by 239 millimeters, we'll turn them into centimeters. But first, we need to figure out how tall this thing is. So, let's see, height of a ream of paper five centimeters. So, we are saying this thing is five centimeters tall. Go, calculate out its volume, and then we can calculate out its density. Charlie, talk to you. You're, 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 you're doing the lecture right there. Give it to, give it to everybody. What do we do first? Okay, so we're going to multiply these three numbers together. And what do you get when you multiply them all, Charlie? 3,013.2. Okay, and that's in centimeters cubed. How much is that in milliliters, Ella? It is the same thing, 3,013.2 milliliters. We said centimeter cubed is the same thing as a milliliter. How much is that in liters, Nathan? Uh, 3.0132 liters. Okay? And then you stop and check out with your common sense. Do you think about how big a two-liter bottle is? Is this close to a two-liter bottle in size, a little bit more? Yes. Could you maybe get three liters or so in here? Maybe a little bar are a little generous, but it's on the right scale. You didn't get 30 liters. You didn't get 0.3 liters. So it's 
on the right scale for something that size. Then now we want to get its density. All right. So Julia, what are we gonna do next? This is the kilograms divided by the liters. And Mathilde Leblanc, what does your calculator tell you the answer to this is? I have, well, we have something smaller up here and something bigger down there. Is our answer going to be more or less than one? Yes, Karen. Yes. If the denominator is bigger, it's going to be less than one. Okay? So therefore, uh, theoretically, would this ream of paper float or sink, Elsa? If it's less than one, would it float? Oh, you've got some issues here. Uh, what did you get as the density? 0 0.75 kilograms per liter, which is the same as 0 0.75 grams per milliliter. Um, but that's also to about like how much would this size amount of water weigh? Like would if you have an equal like tray of water, would it weigh more or less than that? Um, how many sig figs, Nico, do I have in my original measurements? It is just one. So therefore, Bridget, what should my final answer be? Mm, I don't think we need to do no. one or 0.8. It's a 0 0.8 grams per milliliter is the density of the paper there. If you have one sheet of paper, you believe me that I believe that one sheet of paper floats. Can we see a bunch of them? Let's see. Let's see. All right, maybe that volume calculation was too easy for you guys. You want something more interesting? We've got a can of soda right here. Okay, so interestingly, when I went to 7 Eleven, they don't sell cans of one little soda anymore. Like Coke is sold in bottles. You have to get like energy drinks uh, to get a can of it. So, Elliot, how tall is our can of soda? Ten centimeters. Right down, 15.5 centimeters tall. And, and okay, how, what is it that exactly? Is? So our diameter is 6, and our height was 15.5. Look at the person next to you awkwardly and see if they remember how to figure out the volume of a cylinder from geometry class. Be like, uh, do you want to do the area or two? Talk to the person next to you and see if you can come up with it. So, 2 pi r is circumference, area is pi r squared, square. then we're going to take that area and have it all the way down until we do pi r squared times just height. Pi r squared times height, because you have it all the way through the height, it has that whole area. All, all of those little layers, all those little cross sections have that. Mallory, what is pi? Approximately. What is pi? 3.14. What is our radius, Mallory? No, careful, you're, you're, you're going too many steps ahead. 3. 
times 15.5. So Mallory, you're going to try to answer farther questions. This is 9 times 15.5. And by the way, 9 is going to be centimeters squared. 15.5 is in centimeters. So I'm going to end up with a number that is centimeters cubed. And what was that number, Mallory? You started giving it to me for what? 438.03 centimeters cubed. Okay. If I want the density, going back to Carly over there. Carly, what am I going to do here? Divide the mass, which was 438.03 by, which is in, oh, I oh, got that wrong. Okay. I'm going to divide the mass, which is 511.75 grams, by the volume, which is 438.03 milliliters. And what, Ella, do we get out? What, 1.1? 1.1? So now Carly is already thinking ahead and saying, Carly, all right, so this is Nathan's turn. Carly's already had her move on. Nathan, what is the least sig figs we have in our factors? Six, which only has one sig fig. So our best answer, Julia, is? One. one. It is around one gram per milliliter. Yeah, all the factors come in. Whatever the least factor is going into that equation, that's what you're stuck with. Generally, in fact, diet sodas will often float because they're so carbonated and full of like air, and sugary sodas will sink because they are like denser because they have like so much like salt and sugar in them. So you can tell diet versus regular soda by when it floats or sinks. So sometimes we're solving for the density, sometimes they give us the density, and we're solving for something else. How would I solve if I have density equals mass or volume? How would I solve that for mass? Julie, what would I do to both sides to get mass by itself? Multiply both sides by volume. So another equation to write down your notes is V times D equals M. Volume times density equals mass. Three, two, one. Oh, last name for some reason. Hold on, we're going to do the copper man first. How much would a 37 milliliter chunk of copper weigh, given that copper has a density of 8.94 grams per centimeter cubed? Go. Talk to your homie. Do some calculations. Enjoy. Matilde, set me up here. What am I going to do? What am I going to say? I'm going to multiply the other. I'm also going to write down my units. I'm going to write this unit in terms of milliliters because then it looks more like it cancels out. We kind of know that those two things are the same, but we want to like make it visible that those are going to cancel out. So I'm going to be able to... Slice those away, and what, Kaya, is my answer? What does your calculator tell you the answer is? 330.78 watts. What unit would that be in? Grams, which makes sense as a mass, so we like that. Um, Mallory, how many sig figs should I probably have for my answer? Two, so what should my answer be, Bridget? Three hundred thirty with or without a decimal point. Three hundred thirty without a decimal point conveys that number being known to two sig figs. Smiling and nodding throughout the land. I know, add a little bit more unit conversion action in there by telling you the Tin Man's head. Maybe it's you know two three liters tall, two point seven five liters in size, and Tin has a density of five point seven five. If the eyes suggest that this is not true, but if his head were solid tin. How much would it weigh? Go.
Nico, start us off here. What are we going to do to start? Either a milliliter is a small unit of measurement. Milli, little. Okay. Multiply it. So I'm going to take yeah. 2.75 liters and I'm going to multiply it by 1,000 milliliters per liter. And then what am I going to do? What? Multiply by? What, what are we trying to get to? What, what, what are we trying to find out? We're trying to find out how much is weight. The weight is in what unit? It is grams. Okay. Grams. So I want to get the grams from here. Fortunately, grams is already in the top. So if I have 5.75 grams per milliliter, that's going to get grams out. Because right now, if you look this over, Okay, in here, milliliters is going to cancel out. By the way, that's a ninja slice of food that we're eating. Uh, and liters is going to slice out. Okay, and that's going to leave me with just the grams. So when Elsa punches these numbers into her calculator, 2.75 times 1,000 times 5.75. We're expecting a fairly big number. It's got 1,000 in it, so it should be pretty sizable. And what does your calculator tell you, Elsa? 15,812 grams. Carlos, how many sig figs do I have in the least of my factors? The least sig figs of my factors. How many sig figs do I have in 5.75, Carlos? Three. How many do I have in 1,000 to 1? Infinite, because that is an exact conversion within a unit system as infinite sig figs. Carlos, how many do I have in 2.75? So how much should I have in my final answer? No, three. It is whatever I have, the smallest number that I have in the factors that are going into it. So, Leo, what should my answer be? Fifteen thousand eight hundred grams. Smiling, and nodding. A little bit rough there, but we get through it. Um, <clears throat> density equals mass over volume. That's our key equation. If I want to get volume by itself, what do I have to do? Do a little bit of algebra to isolate volume. Elliot, if I want to get this volume out of the denominator, what am I going to do to both sides? Multiply by what? No. I want to get this out of the denominator. I'm going to multiply by V. If I multiply both sides by V, that gets this thing out of the denominator. So V times D equals M. MK, if I want to isolate V, what am I going to do to both sides? Divide by density. So our final equation is V equals m over d. If you look at that in terms of units, that's grams divided by grams per milliliter. If you think about what that could be, let's see if that's good, that's not. I'm just going to have to say grams times milliliters per gram, which leaves me with just milliliters. Phew. So the equation that you want, you can write down in your notebook. Make sure that you write down it. Is this one v equals m over d. And let's do it. Okay, what volume of iron, that's a density of 7.86 grams per milliliter, will weigh 5,843.6 grams? Go. What volume would weigh that much? How much would I need volume wise to weigh that much?
am I going to begin? What am I going to set up here as my problem? Six what? Grams per milliliter. What does your calculator say the answer is, Matilde? 723.46 what? What unit would that be in? Milliliters. And that's the kind of stuff we're working on getting in the habit of, of treating these numbers not just like numbers, but like measured quantities. And what unit do they have with them? Julia, how many sig figs should I have in my final answer? Three, maybe what should my final answer be? 743 milliliters of three sig figs. So I'm not in. Um, not everybody. So far, it's been, I've given you an equation and you use that in an operation. You're going to have to use multiple equations and talk to the person next to you to figure out this question. What volume of silver would you need to weigh the same as 45 milliliters of zinc? You need both densities. Talk to the person next to you. See what you guys can come up with. Turn our pretty and turn our lunch. Carlos, one more cooperation from YouTube. Everybody else is just chatting, sharing their feelings. Carlos, you can have it. Who would zinc ally be? What? Pure? Yes, that is just a comic book cover that I can find that related to zinc. Don't let that distract you too much. What did you and Carly do to decide to start this project? <laughs> okay. That is a good first step. We want to have this way the same. So we're going to calculate out a mass here. We have 45 milliliters of zinc. So if you do 45 milliliters times 7.14 grams per milliliter. Carly, what did we do? That's not what you did? Oh, oh well, let's try this. Louder. 
321-point rumble. 321.3. Oh, uh, what unit is that going to be in? Wait. That's how much that chunk would weigh. 45 millimeters of zinc would weigh this much. MK, what am I going to do with that? This is the mass, 321.3 grams. I'm going to divide that by the density of silver, which is 10.5 grams per milliliter in terms of the units. Divided by this ratio is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal. So the grams are going to cancel out. This should give me in milliliters. 300 divided by 10 should be around 30. So Elliot, what number is your calculator tell you? 30.6 milliliters. Leo Falvo, how many sig figs should we have in our final answer? Two. So, Carlos, what should our final answer be? What should our final answer be? If we have two sig figs. Just 31 milliliters. Hopefully, you're going to remember to practice this and come to your own home. I've got some density homework for you to pass out and show the people around you. There you go. Enjoy.